Do you believe his suicide was related to his job? 100%. In what way? Um, well, he, he was shot at at one point in time, a long time ago. And, I th and looking back now, and, and hindsight's always 2020, isn't it? But um, Jerry had a very tender heart, and um, he would tell me a lot of things about his job, but I know he didn't. You know, he spared me from the gory details. And I think just um, being shot at and not catching the person who shot at him, not knowing if it was somebody he dealt with, um, if it was somebody that was specifically after him or just random, um, that was very traumatic for him. And just all the traumatic calls he went to. I mean... It just built up. It just built up. Each call you go to, it's not one call. Each call they go to just takes a little nip and a little nip and a little nip. Dr. Sue Varma is in the audience. She works with law enforcement and even spearheaded care for first responders after 9-11. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Varma, let me get you to stand up. Uh, the, the complexity here is, obviously, this is a line of work people choose. Yes. And they go into it, I'm assuming, and I believe in most cases, because they want to help. But they aren't getting the help. In this case, Jerry was able to mask at work, but deal with it at home in a way that his wife clearly, Cindy, was able to see. How does, a law, how does the department handle this? The problem is we never know when it's going to take impact on somebody's life. Something could have happened chronologically 20 years ago, but doesn't um, take effect until now. Meaning so that they could have had trauma in their yeah. life 20 years ago, unrelated yes. to the job, and yes. then it triggers. Yes, or that they have trauma on the job and it doesn't trigger until they have a personal incident, as we saw with the car accident. Anytime you have a person who feels a, a higher, higher sense of responsibility, as we do see in this case, a lot of police officers want to take care of other people. There's a sense of control that they need to be able to protect other people, but the problem is they internalize it. They don't speak about it. There's this lot of stigma. There's a lot of shame. There's fear of not getting promoted. There's this idea that we have to be tough and this idea of equating vulnerability with weakness, right? Yeah. It's not encouraged for people to come out. Especially in law enforcement. Exactly. And then when they have injury, illness, and some other trauma re-triggers, all of a sudden, it's like the dam breaks. Also, it, are they able to be prescribed antidepressants? For, I mean, we know now that depression is hereditary, yes. so you have an officer who is capable of doing the job, but maybe has a history of depression, unrelated, but yes. wants to perform the job and under medication could. Are they able to take... Yes. Medicine? Yes, they are. But the problem is people fear getting help. They think that they will be stigmatized, that they'll be seen as weak and not be able to perform at the job. And, and that's what I, I want to get back to you, because sure. in a sense, not in a sense, in fact, you are the front line. Right. You are the, you're right. the wife. You're at home. Yeah. And you've decided to fight the stigma, yeah. break the code of silence, and tell your story. Right. What do you want to see happen mm. next? Well, well, I just want to touch on this. Jerry and I had been to counselors, and we had more than one counselor tell us or tell Jerry, you don't want to claim this on your insurance. So we would pay cash for counseling because, because the, of the fear trigger. of the department finding out that you're in counseling. Mm. So that, that was a fact for us, more than one counselor. Um, right now... The reason I'm here is not because I want to be on the Tamron Hall show. <laughs> I want to I want people to know that Jerry's life mattered and all of these law enforcement officers' lives matter. And I want the departments to understand that they need to do things for these men and women so they don't get to this point. Well, there is no reason, and I heard this audience gasp, there's no reason that you and Jerry should have had to sneak around and pay cash for his treatment when I'm sure it was covered, but what wasn't covered was him by the support right. that he needed right. to be vocal right. and be open. So, listen, I know that you didn't want to be on the Tamron Hall show, but <laughs> well, Tamron too, Hall but is blessed and happy yes. that you're here. Thank you and so thank much. You. I'm very And happy I know you are still. Thank you so much. Breathing, and we're here to you.